In this last section of the chapter, we want to look at the method of Lagrange multipliers. Now, Lagrange multipliers are actually a bigger deal than we are going to deal with right now. Um, so we're just going to use them to solve our optimization problems. But in future courses, you will see Lagrange multipliers again. All right, so how is this going to work and why are we doing it? Um, this actually is just going to give us an alternative method that is sometimes quicker and easier than the ones we have used so far in order to find an optimization solution. That's it. So it's just, just, just a different way to do it. Um, so we have f of x, y, z is the function we want to optimize. So we call that the objective function. Right? We ran into that language in the previous section, and we ran into it in Calc 1. All right, and then g of x, y, z is the constraint equation. It's the constraint under which we want to uh, solve this uh, or optimize this particular objective function. And you'll notice the constraint must be equal to zero. That is key for the method of Lagrange multipliers to work. All right, so then the solution to the system, the gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g and g of x, y, z is equal to zero, we'll optimize the original function. We're going to compare the outputs of these solutions to classify the maximum minimum. All right, so the variable, this symbol, <laughs> that is lambda. It's a Greek letter, right? it's the L sound if you're ever in Greece. Um, you may or may not find lambda during the process of solving the problem. It's kind of not that important. It's incidental to the process, so it's not part of your final answer. So just be aware, sometimes you'll find it, sometimes you won't. It doesn't really make any difference. You only find it if you need to for the sake of what you're doing. All right, this will all make sense when we do an example, but we're actually going to start off with a review example. So we're going to use the methods of calculus one. So in other words, we're going to do a review of what we were doing to do this by hand the other way. Okay, so we want to find the maxima and minimum values of this function. So f of x, y equals x, y plus x plus y, such that, okay. So here is the objective function. You can see that this is what's being optimized. So this is objective, such that x squared times y squared is equal to four that's the constraint that we are working under. Okay, so um, let's do what we were doing in the previous section. Now the problem is that um, if we want to use calc 1, we have to get rid of one of these variables. So this is no good to us. So we're going to have to solve this constraint. So let's solve it for y. So y squared is equal to 4 divided by x squared. And so y would be plus or minus, and that's what's going to make this tricky, 4 divided by x squared. Hmm. So that means that I need to break this up into two cases. So case number one, I'm going to let y be, well, 2 over x, right? So the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of x squared is x. So let me extend that a little further. So let me do 2 over x, case 1. Okay, so let's do that. So f of x, y then becomes f of x comma 2 over x. That's an x. <laughs> it didn't work out that way. Yeah, I'm not sure I made it better, but <laughs> that's all right. This will be f of x when we're all done. So this will be um, and I'm going to call this f1 of x because this is case number 1. So this will be x times 2 over x plus x plus 2 over x. So that would be 2 plus x plus 2 over x. Right? So that's f1 of x. Okay, the critical points happen when the derivative equals 0 or is undefined, but we're not really worried about undefined because undefined is just going to happen when x is 0, so that's kind of not important. So let's find that derivative. So the derivative of f1 with respect to x would be 1 
and then remember this is 2x to the negative 1, so you bring the negative 1 down, so minus 2 over x squared. Okay, so that would be equal to 0 at 2 over x squared equals 1, so x squared equals 2, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. All right, so let me see here. If I take the square root of 2 and I put it back into here, right, what would my y value be? So if x is the square root of 2, y is 2 over the square root of 2, which is 2 square root of 2 over 2 if you rationalize, which is the square root of 2, right? So I have the square root of 2, square root of 2 as one critical point. And then the same thing is going to happen with x equals negative square root of 2. y would be 2 over the negative square root of 2. And it's going to multiply by the square root of 2 over 2 over 2. So it's negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is negative square root of 2. OK, so there are critical points. Crit points are square root of 2, square root of 2, and negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2. Now, what about 0, right? So, um, sorry, what about if x was equal to 0? So we have this whole, the critical points happen when the derivative is 0 or undefined. But undefined isn't going to do us any good, because if x was equal to 0, y would be uh, nothing we can name. <laughs> it would be infinity, sort of, right? So it's not going to work. So we could also say um, in here, we can make a little note or f prime undefined, but that would lead x equal to 0, but that would make y equal to infinity, and so we're done, right? That's not going to give us anything useful, <laughs> right? So the undefined one didn't work out to give us anything handy at all. Okay, so the derivative equals 0 got us some answers. Derivative equals undefined isn't going to work because the denominator equals 0 would be fine, but that's going to make a function not exist, and we're going to be in trouble. So right there, we, we're, in, we're in bad zone. All right, so then what about the second case? So we did case number one, where y was equal to 2 squared of x. So I did that kind of in purple here. All right, let's look at case number two, where y is equal to negative 2 over x. Okay, so then f of x comma negative 2 over x would be f2 of x, I'll call it. So that would be x times negative 2 over x plus x minus 2 over x. So that would be negative 2 plus x minus 2 over x. All right, no problem so far. Seems good. So then the derivative, right, CPs, will happen when the derivative is 0 or undefined. Undefined will have the same problems as the other ones, so we don't really have to worry about it. Um, but derivative equals 0. Let's see what happens. So the derivative of negative 2 is 0. Derivative of x is 1. And this will be a plus 2 over x squared. And we're in trouble, because if we set that equal to 0, that would mean 2 over a positive number equals negative 1. And that's not real. Right? That's not going to give us anything good. I can't take 2 over something squared and get negative unless I'm in the imaginary number system. So this is not real. So we're going to toss it. Right? Not, this isn't giving us any good answers. So the only critical points we have are square root of 2, square root of 2, and negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2. So now we make a table. So we take our critical points, which are square root of 2, square root of 2, and negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2, and we're going to plug them into the function. So when we put square root of 2 and square root of 2 in, to the original function, it would be 2 plus 2 square root of 2, right? Because square root of 2 plus square root of 2. So 2 plus 2 square root of 2. If I put negative square root of 2 in, negative square root of 2 times the negative square root of 2 is 2, minus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. So this is 2 minus 2 square root of 2. 
So that means <laughs> that that's the max and that's the min. Conclusion. Oop, if I could spell the word conclusion. We have an absolute min at negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2, 2 minus square root of 2. And we have an absolute max at square root of 2, square root of 2, 2 plus 2 square root of 2, like that. Circle this one and circle this one. Now, this did not use the method of Lagrange multipliers. This did it all by hand, kind of brute forcing our algebra, figuring out what was not real, and so on. So in the next video, I'm going to do this exact same problem again, but I'm going to use the method of Lagrange multipliers.